Oh, there. Welcome to the program. I'm Jane Motani. Close observers of the COVID-19 pandemic find that Rwanda's response to the pandemic this year makes it one of the few countries that can overcome the pandemic based on how it's met access to vaccines to many people. General Assembly of the Senate of Rwanda on Tuesday set up a special commission to investigate various issues in the IDP model villages and other villages in which the government relocates in various people to address the plight of the homeless. A very warm welcome to the news in details. Now, close observers of the COVID-19 pandemic find that Rwanda's response to the pandemic this year makes it one of the few countries that can overcome the pandemic based on how it's met access to vaccines to many people. It is while 80% of Rwandans over the age of 12 have been vaccinated and have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine and measures to prevent the spread of the disease are still in full swing. With Rwanda's economy having grown significantly during this year of 2021, economic experts have noted that there is confidence that it will continue to grow largely thanks to the economic recovery fan that was set up by the government. Take a look. President Paul Kagame noted that Rwanda has continued to do everything necessary to fight the COVID-19 pandemic and deal with its repercussions, most notably its economic ones, and that has paid off this year. <laughs> During the first quarter of this year, the country's economy grew by 3.5%, then 20.6% in the second quarter, and 10.1% during the third. Last year, the economy shrank by 3.4%. Compared to the second quarter, the agricultural sector grew by 6%, accounting for 25% of the country's GDP in the third quarter. The industrial sector grew by 12%, accounting for 21.1% of the gross domestic product, and the service sector saw an increase of 11%, accounting for as much as 48% of Rwanda's GDP during the quarter. Government efforts to get the private sector back on its feet through things like tax exemptions are being commended by businessmen and women. I can say that the government's efforts to support us have helped to keep our businesses going, especially the industrial sector. It encouraged us to work harder, helping us to meet head-on the challenges that the COVID-19 pandemic has presented. One of the key measures introduced by the government was a 100 billion Rwandan franc recovery fund, and 90% of those original funds have now been depleted, with 141 hotels getting 50.5 billion Rwandan francs, the transportation sector getting 7.5 billion, large and medium companies getting 10.3 billion, and 3,977 small businesses sharing 3.8 billion Rwandan francs. Another 250 billion Rwandan francs has now been injected into the fund. Officials in the private sector believe that these sort of efforts will continue yielding positive results moving forward. Third, I can say that the private sector also played its part, with our members refusing to be discouraged. The losses certainly did not keep us down, and our members simply adapted to meet the new challenges. I must know that the very state of the economy itself helped people to deal with the challenges as they arose. Economic experts agree that government efforts have been critical in helping the private sector to continue pushing forward. The losses will always come quickly, and recovery will always be slow. You cannot expect things to change in one day just because the money to turn things around is there. It could take three, four or even five years to happen. What people can do now is be careful, not to put the country back into a total lockdown. That way people can continue working, profits can increase and jobs can be created. In the process, even the smallest of entrepreneurs will get financial aid as the money becomes available. 
It is projected that Rwanda's economy grew by as much as 10.2% during this year and should grow by 7.2% during the next, then 7.9% in 2023 and 7.5% in 2024. General Assembly of the Senate of Rwanda on Tuesday set up a special commission to investigate various issues in the IDP Modo villages and other villages in which the government relocates in various people to address the plight of the homeless. It is, it is expected that this commission will have a one-month extension and it will focus on the infrastructure in those villages including water, electricity and roads. This commission will also explore the welfare and development of the residents in those villages, their children's education, entertainment, relations among them, and the Ndi Umunya Rwanda program, the governance of the villages, and the role of the beneficiaries in the villages in maintaining and developing or contributing to them. The implementation of work will be carried out by a special commission of six senators headed by Senator Mure Xianghuano Marie Rose. Moving on, Niger has given eight Rwandans who were sent to the country with Rwanda, without Rwanda's knowledge a week to leave. They had been sent there by the International Residue Mechanism. The order issued by Niger, signed by the Minister of Defense, Mr. Hamadou Adamu Suley, states that the Rwandans are Sigiri, Sigira Nira Zopotin, Zuo Mone. Zoua Neme François Xavier, Nézidiaï Alphonse, Mouvouni Tarsis, Nadjerura André, Tsengiyumva Anatole, Mujenjiran, Prosper Na, and Sagahutu Innocent. All eight were reported to have been sent in Arusha at the ICTR headquarters after many countries refused to host them, although some of those countries still housed their families. Niger's decision to deport them was based on diplomatic or foreign relations. The country has also called on Ministry of Defense and Decentralization and the National Police to monitor the implementation of the resolution. This, this is after Rwanda saw a clarification from the International Residue Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals on the eight Rwandans acquitted or convicted by the TPIR and completed their sentences and transferred to Niger without the knowledge of Rwanda. The issue was raised by the representative of Rwanda to the United Nations, Valentin Rugwabiza, to the members of the United Nations General Assembly. At the time, she said Rwanda was confident that Niger would fulfill its responsibilities by ensuring that none of the eight Rwandans would use Niger's land to plan and carry out activities that would hinder the security of the Lex region. The government of Rwanda has repeatedly requested that the people be extradicted to Rwanda because they are Rwandans. The Rwanda National Police has concluded a month-long campaign to provide housing for the needy and other social development projects worth billions of Rwandan francs. In Kigali, these campaigns are based on programs for the police to sensitize the public on the prevention and control measures of COVID-19. In different regions and sectors that make up the city of Kigali, various competitions have been organized for the implementation of these measures with numerous innovations taking place. The Wumbogo sector in Gasabo district came out on top against the other 35 that make up the country. The administration of the sector was presented with a car and Kichuchiro district came in first place with a trophy. There is one thing that really stood out, which is placing cameras in the command center in a place we call the hot spot. It helps us to remind the citizens without having to deploy all our workers all over the area. You can be in the control room and be able to control up to five different zones, yet you are in one place. Another thing is that we went on to partner with different initiatives and entities where we went on to place machines all around to encourage the prevention measures that are put in place. In this same city as well, a house was donated to a woman in need of it in Dumba sector. Kigali Mayor Prudence Ruwindisa says that despite the competition coming to an end in regards to the COVID-19 prevention measures, there is still a long way to go in terms of fighting the virus. 
In the western part of the country, the community will shed light on one of the projects sponsored by the police, which includes six cooperatives of women who used to do business across the border. This project cost about 40 million and 200,000 francs. The beneficiaries are proud to have been helped as they say that the illegal trading was negatively affecting them. We were really losing a lot on the borders, but right now things are better. We are part of cooperatives and we are working efficiently. Ending the month that was dedicated to the project of the Rwanda National Police in the eastern province, it took place in Gatiwa district. In this province, seven houses were built, which means one in each district that were given to the needy. About 13 cows were also distributed. About 1,458 households have been provided with solar power. About 1,000 people have been given a health insurance scheme. The whole budget was about more than 291 million. It was a project that was well appreciated by the community. In the northern province, the event took place in Burera district. A mother named Juan Mahoro Angelique, a resident of Gisovusel in Chanika sector, who had been homeless for four years, was given a modern house. This is a huge deal for me because life was really hard for me. I am thankful for these people and to the president of Rwanda for making the Rwandan police make this initiative possible. In the southern province, the Rwanda National Police came to Mohanga district in Mushishiro sector, where the family of Fidel Urguihan Dagaza was given a modern house after being relocated from a high-risk zone. The old man says that settling down with others in the village will help him to live out his old age well. In this province, the police built eight houses for the needy, and 1,070 homes have been provided with solar energy. The Rwanda National Police spokesperson CP John Bosco Cabera called on the people to make the most of the infrastructure they have been given with the assistance so that it can be an efficient way to prevent crime and start reporting on time where they think there was any crime committed. <laughs> There was a lot of awareness that was done in regards to crime fighting with the help of the community in order for them to give the news on time. Anything that can put their health and safety in jeopardy should be stopped and this can be done through the quick spread of information. The second thing is that this project is meant to improve the livelihood of the community. This will definitely help their development so that even others can look up to them. During this month of the projects and campaigns implemented by the police across the country, 30 houses were built. 4,578 households were provided with solar energy, 1,600 households were covered by health insurance, 11 cooperatives were provided with modern development facilities, 13 cattle sheds were built, one car was donated in collaboration with the police and the city of Kigali to four households. All of these activities altogether cost more than 997 million Rwandan francs. Martina Ebera, ITV News. Thank you, Martina, for that report. Now, close observers of the COVID-19 pandemic find that Rwanda's response to the pandemic this year makes it one of the few countries that can overcome the pandemic based on how it's met access to vaccines to many people. It is while 80% of Rwandans over the age of 12 have been vaccinated and have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and measures to prevent the spread of the disease are still in full swing. 2021 began with an increase in the number of people infected with COVID-19, which led to the city of Kigali to be put under lockdown just after the festive season of 2021. The world then eagerly waited for the COVID-19 vaccines, which were very scarce to come by. However, in the first three months, Rwanda began to receive some few vaccines, and in March, vaccines were administered for the most vulnerable populations. I'm very happy that our country has helped us to get vaccinated, free of charge. At the time, health workers and others at the front line were also inoculated. Although the vaccines were still few at the time, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, the health minister, assured that more vaccines were on the way. We do expect to receive more probably before end of the month, and then we'll resume again campaign and go for a second round of vaccination. Uh, and then we'll consider those who were not able to be vaccinated with this first round. So people should be calm, wait until they are called for getting their vaccine. Everyone will get his vaccine in any case by the end of next year. Although the country had not been complacent in its efforts to prevent the spread of the pandemic, 
The COVID-19 pandemic intensified from June until about September. After the discovery of the new variant, the Delta variant in Rwanda, in those months is when more than 80% of the more than 1,300 people who have died from the pandemic passed on. The number of patients admitted in hospitals also increased, which required the country to invest in medical infrastructure such as oxygen plants and opening due hospitals across the country to accommodate COVID-19 patients. As we speak, the Ruguinhoavu, the Chirehe, the Nyarujenje, Ruhengeri, and other hospitals in Kigali have oxygen plants. Also, the government improved the King Faisal Hospital so that it can be supporting other hospitals in Kigali. Isolation beds are more than 500, while we have 180. In the ICU, we keep on increasing the capacity. In the meantime, the COVID-19 vaccination campaign continued according to the availability of vaccines, and they were deployed with the help of security organs to provinces for immediate inoculation. In September, all people aged 18 years and above were given the vaccine in Kigali, and this was also rolled out across the country. Just last month, the vaccine started to be administered to young people aged 12 years and above. One of the reasons Rwanda got vaccines, either through the COVAX facility or others that were donated by other countries, was the way the country carried out the inoculations with no vaccines going to waste. The president of the Council of European Union, Charles Michel, in March, was accompanied by the Secretary General of La Francophonie, Madame Louise Mushichiwabo, overseeing the COVID-19 vaccination campaign at the Mayanje Health Center in Abuja district. I have been satisfied with the way everyone took it to their heart, be it health workers but mostly community health workers, because they do it selflessly. The other important thing is the way these health services have been integrated with technology, because it improves data control about vaccination, which helps leaders to monitor the vaccination program. As 2021 ends, about five and a half billion people have been fully vaccinated in Rwanda, while almost eight billion have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, while the other booster shot continues to be administered to those who are eligible. In his message to the country on where the country stands, President Paul Kagame said that this year has left Rwanda with lessons on how to find solutions to spread to fight the spread of the pandemic and other potential threats that face the country. Uko chaji eji hinduka. Icha kura tuwasho woye kutera ina mgenziza. Kandi jihu kuchatu jihaga zenezi. Bumge mwuriyo kwenjenzi tukuifa shishi je. Mwukuri nda wanyarugwanda nungu chingiri jihu kuchose. Uri chingo rwa COVID-19. Kujezubu mirongu nani kuijana. Jaba tura jaba atu. Uwera kwa fiti mnya katu minibili kuzamura, baha weni ibururu chingo rumwe. Ukodu komeza gute elina mge tujimbele, tugu mba kurusha ho kuijira kandi. Tukite gura guhangana ni chasha kakudu hunga banyi. Niyo mhamvu tukwa tanje gufatanya ni miriango, aru uvumge buka Afrika, nu uvumge mgibi hugu bjiburai, ndetse na masosiyete nka BioNTech mu gukorera inkingo n'indi miti mu Rwanda guhera mu akuta as it is elsewhere in the world as 2021 comes to an end Rwanda has put in place measures to combat the increase in covid-19 infections attributed to the Omicron variant reporting for RTV News Gloria Mutesi
Following the suspension of Rwanda flights to Dubai, local businessmen and women here in Rwanda say they have gone online in order to continue importing goods from the port city. Rwanda announced the suspension on Monday and so the local business community has been adapting accordingly. We usually buy different products wholesale in Dubai, things like phones and computers, but you don't need to physically go there to get them. You can just order them. Regardless, the suspension of flights going to Dubai is significant. I believe we will now have to order samples, analyze them and then place the wholesale order and that takes extra time. Now in the meantime, we ask that Rwanda and other transportation companies offer cargo flights so that we can use the people we trust there to send us the goods. Economic experts recognize that technology will without a doubt help to keep businesses going as Rwanda continues in her fight against COVID-19, but also stress that they will still feel the pinch. It is fortunate that the pandemic broke out after technological advancements had been made in the country, and most who go to Dubai go there to buy things wholesale and for business meetings, all of which can be done virtually. And that applies for other destinations like China, but you cannot say that the disruption will not be felt. It's just not the same as physically going there. There is also the fact that this is the holiday season and that is a popular holiday destination. At a time, many airlines were making money. Regardless, technology is helping to alleviate most of those repercussions. This is not the first time passenger flights have been suspended. But cargo ones can continue and that is something to consider. These are extraordinary circumstances and the business community should be able to adapt. Rwandan imports from the UAE jumped from 116.4 million US dollars to 237 million between 2017 and 2018, and exports there increased from 237 million US dollars to 280 million during the same period. COVID-19 infections increasing those who have contracted the infection and recovered are warning people against thinking that being ill with it is some sort of joke, because experience has shown them that it is not. the general public should be complacent towards. At first it felt like a regular cold, but things changed and I ended up in hospital, something a flu has never done to me. They should stop playing with this, because when you die there are no second chances. When you pass away, that's it. COVID-19 is very real, and I know this because I survived it. People should stop being complacent towards it and protect themselves. I do not understand how people can take something that has ravaged the whole world so lightly. As the infection rate increases, I get worried, what with the way this can spread through the air. People must recognize this threat and take necessary precautions to protect themselves and others. Officials at the Rwanda Biomedical Center have confirmed that some people have been taken to COVID-19 treatment centers after requiring supplemental oxygen, though numbers are not yet critical. They warn, however, that the Omicron variant of COVID-19 will change that if people are not careful. When a person becomes critically ill, they are taken to a treatment center and we are currently using the Kanyinya Center and it does have patients on oxygen there. People should take all necessary precautionary measures because we do not want to have to go back to enforcing harsh measures. Only we as a people can defeat this pandemic and everybody must play their part. Research has found that the Omicron variant can spread up to 70 times faster than its predecessors. Well, there you have it on behalf of the entire news production team. Thank you so much for sticking with us. I'm Jane Mutoni. Bye for now.